Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to study junction capacitance. In the previous clip, we have already seen the lump representation of the parasitic MOSFET capacitance. In case we have not, then it's very simple. You draw the four terminals of the MOSFET and identify the capacitance between two of its terminals and see which all, term, which all capacitance are going to be important for you to look into. There would be no capacitance between the source and the drain because between the source and the drain there will be a channel which will be present and there will be no capacitance. Just remember that. So in the previous clip we have already studied oxide capacitance. In this clip we are going to study junction capacitance and the two junction capacitance which are left for us to study are nothing but drain to bulk and source to bulk, drain to body or source to body. Both are due to the depletion region charge surrounding the source and the drain. It's basically nothing but this source and drain. They would have a depletion region charge surrounding it. We already know this through the working of the MOSFET. Ideally, this N and this P of drain and this N and this P, N of source and P of body and N of drain and P of body, they ideally have a reverse bias PN junction diode which is formed for its normal operation. And we know that there is a depletion region which gets created. Here, we are just talking about the capacitance due to the depletion region charge surrounding the source and the drain. So as you keep on varying your terminal voltages, specifically your drain voltage, this depletion region will keep on changing or the depletion region charge will keep on changing, which in turn will change the value of your junction capacitance or this capacitance, which is nothing but the junction capacitance will come to it, why it's called junction. So these are the basics. Before we go and see this, let's understand. This is a cross-sectional view. Let's focus our attention to drain and type diffusion. If you see around this drain, there'll be a depletion region charge. So it will be the case around the source. So between the drain to source and the substrate. So between your junction and your substrate is a capacitance which you are trying to identify. Drain and source junction and your depletion region, that capacitance is what you are interested in finding. So just pay attention. We are going to just zoom into this N type and draw a 3D diagram. Here I have drawn that N type with this 3D diagram. So what I have done here is N type diffusion region is surrounded by P type substrate in 3D and I have indicated all the regions with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with the dimensions given as you can see. If you observe this carefully, this area 2, 3 and 4 because this is n type, right? So there is n present here, n plus, n plus, n plus. But in 3D, they are surrounded by a channel stop implant, which is nothing but P plus. I hope you understand this. See this n plus is surrounded by P plus. And if you extend it in 3D, you'll understand that 2, 3 and 4 are the regions which are surrounded by a P plus region of channel stop implant. So that's exactly, let's see it here, junction 2. Junction 3 and Junction 4, N plus P plus, N plus P plus, N plus P plus type. And here is nothing but the area of each junction. Area is width into length. Here it's Y into XJ. So it's written that way. Here it's XJ into W. So it's written that way. So on and so forth. Whereas region 1 and region 5, this is towards the substrate, right? So this has P type, N plus type, N plus because it's a diffusion. And similarly, 1, Junction 1 also has N plus. It's also facing the substrate, so N plus and P, correct? So the substrate, we are assuming that the P type substrate has a doping density of Na, but the P plus channel stop implant will have a doping density, which is going to be 10 times Na. Now, when we say this, what's going to happen is that the sidewall capacitance, this we can also call as sidewall capacitance for two, three and four, they'll technically have a different value from the other junction capacitance. But for the time being, we are not getting into that. For this entire analysis, we are going to presume an abrupt step PN junction profile. What do you mean by abrupt step PN junction profile? Here, P and N layers would be uniformly doped with accepted density NA and doper density ND respectively. When they both are uniformly doped, this idealized PN junction is nothing but a step junction or an abrupt junction. So we are assuming that for our analysis to start off with. So I think we're all set to do the analysis of junction capacitance. Now, how are we going to do this? Let's understand the basic. 
To calculate the capacitance, I'm going to find out the total charge. I need to know the total depletion region thickness where that charge is going to present. So I'm going to find XD. So here is what I have written. Calculating the depletion capacitance of a reverse bias abrupt PN junction. We understood that the drain and substrate junction is always going to be reverse bias. So we are concerned with an abrupt PN junction. Abrupt means uniformly doped. Reverse bias I explained you and we are concerned in finding this depletion capacitance or the junction capacitance. We have already said that N and P type have their respective doping densities and reverse bias voltage is nothing but V minus. So depletion region thickness. This we have studied in our basic classes. If you don't know for the timing just assume this is the value of the depletion region thickness which is given by square root of 2 into the doping of acceptor plus the doping of donor upon donor into acceptor into phi 0 minus V this entire thing is into epsilon of silicon upon charge Q. So what is this phi 0? This is nothing but the reverse bias voltage. This is acceptor de doping density. This is donor uh, doping density. Phi 0 is the built-in junction potential which we already know is nothing but KT by Q ln of Na into Nd upon Ni square. Correct? We already know this. So with this we have got the depletion region thickness as we know that we are interested in finding the charge so for that we need to find out the capacitance value so depletion region charge stored in the junction can be written depletion region charge right can be written in terms of depletion region thickness let's understand this so we just saw we just saw the depletion region charge now we want to find the total charge here q it's going to be charge into the donor and acceptor present there so it's Na into Nd upon Na plus Nd we already know this into the total area where this charge is present so this is into A into the junction thickness correct depletion region thickness I mean so this will be into Xd so this will give me the total charge which I have written here Qj junction charge is nothing but area A stands for the junction area Q I already explained Na Nd upon Na plus Nd have we already discussed and Xd is nothing but depletion region thickness because it's in 3D, right? So area into thickness. We are going to encounter the depletion region charge, which is nothing but A into XD. So let's put from here the value of XD here. Once you do that and once you rearrange the terms, you will get the value of QJS to be equal to this. Now the junction capacitance associated with the depletion region is nothing but given by CJ, which is nothing but difference, correct? We know Q is equal to CV. So we can easily say that C is equal to Q by V. Here, there's nothing but difference of charge upon the difference in voltage. So basically, because the voltage is a reverse bias voltage and it keeps on varying, so we need to differentiate our charge with regards to voltage. So differentiating with regards to the bias voltage, once we differentiate this equation, we'll get the following equation. It's a pure, simple, straightforward differentiation. Let's keep this and say this as equation one. Now we'll write this equation 1 in a more general format. This is a general format for equation 1 where our equation 1 currently was Cj of V equal to A into epsilon of silicon into Q upon 2 Na into Nd upon Na plus Nd into 1 upon square root of built-in potential minus the reverse bias voltage. I have written a general term for this. A into Cj0 and Cj0 is nothing but this I've just substituted that upon whatever was the term with reverse bias voltage and for uh, built-in potential where m is nothing but the grading coefficient and for an abrupt junction profile where we have uniformly daubed acceptor and donor m is equal to half so you would get exactly the same equation which is seen here and for a linearly graded profile m is equal to 3 so you can keep on varying so the reason why we got this into the general format is if they give us the profile, the junction profile, we can use this general equation to calculate our junction capacitance. So here we got the zero bias junction capacitance per unit area. We got that. We substituted that into the general, I beg your pardon. Here we got the CJV. We found the general expression by putting CJO as nothing but junction capacitance per unit area. So with that, I got the value of my junction capacitance. To end this, we know that the side wall, the junctions 2, 3 and 4, here if you see again, junction 2, 3 and 4 had side wall 
capacitance because they were surrounded by the channel stop implant which was P plus so they will have the doping of 10 times Na let's call that doping as N of sidewall then the value of the sidewall junction capacitance exactly the same equation the only thing which changes here is nothing but the acceptor doping which is now changed to that of the sidewall with that we made an attempt to understand junction capacitance though this is quite a complicated topic currently we have seen it superficially i hope you have followed stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much